Hey everyone, I hope you're doing good. Welcome back to a new video with yours truly, Queen Choma. I am here and basically this is um, a continuation of the message. I'm so sorry guys that I've not been here sooner. I should have put out part three ages ago. I don't know what happened. A lot of things happened, like in terms of life happened and all of this. Um, and I kept meaning to, I was like, oh, I need to come back on here. I need to do part three. And it just never happened. Um, and then today I definitely feel the unction to do it. So I'm so excited to do it today and get this out. So my birthday turned, I mean, <laughs> I turned 40. My birthday came up on the 28th of February, which was a few weeks ago. And so that's definitely been something that has been life-changing for me. Just, you know, really getting to that age of 40 now. And I definitely think a lot of us have been, you know, questioning where is our kingdom spouses, especially those of us that are still waiting. And um, I am going to be talking about that today. So basically, I'm continuing on my message. And I believe that this has come now because some of you need it now. You need this message now more than ever. Um, so yeah. So basically, this message is 2023, the year of blissful blessings and your kingdom spouse update where has um why has there been a delay okay so definitely think this is going to be relevant to what's going on now with many of you a lot of you are still in that waiting period but you're expecting it to have happened and maybe you had the confirmations and some dreams but it's not happened so what's up what's up what's what's going on so i was sharing that like god did reconnect me with my kinder spouse um in terms of communication we were talking again um as in we stopped talking you know had this separation and then basically the lord asked me to reach out to him and i did and it wasn't really ref we didn't really have full communication then i mean we didn't have much communication then it was almost like he got back to me and stuff but it wasn't like you know he was still not really in the in the in the he didn't really want to talk still even though he he did reply with a nice message so anyway, I think I reply, I messaged him a couple of times later, like two more times later, like just sending him, you know, some, some whatever the Lord, um, just some things that I felt led to send him, just some nice things, encouragement, you know. Um, and the Lord honored what I'd sent by, you know, giving me a favorable. Um, he he basically replied and and. The Lord told me he would reach out to me at a certain date. So what happened is when I sent like the second message after communication kind of re after basically there was this period, I think we didn't speak for about three months. And then in the middle of summer or like maybe June or something, I reached out. Maybe it was even May reached out and he did reply, but it was just not like, you know, it was just almost like, let's just keep things as it is. But it was a, you know, good message, good reply. And I was just happy that he was not rude or anything. Um, then I reached out again at some point. And then I reached out again with a small, just encouragement message. And that, he replied to that one a few days later. But he replied specifically when God told me he would. God gave me a specific date. Um... I went to bed. I was like, oh, you know, he's not replied. He's not replied. And I think I noticed something on social media where he just seemed like it was out having fun. I just thought, you know what? The last person he's thinking about right now is me. And so I went to bed. I didn't want to fast anymore. I was meant to be doing this fast. I didn't fast. Went to bed and I woke up and I saw his name in my email in the middle of the night. And the Lord told me he was going to reach out to me on the day. So let's just, let's pretend, let's pretend the day was the twenty the 22nd of July. Let's just say it was the 22nd of July. No, let's say it was the 22nd of June, right? Let's say it was the 22nd of June that the Lord said he would reach out. That's not the date, but I'm just giving you an example. So basically after midnight, he reached out a few minutes after the 22nd. So God said, this is when your kingdom spouse will reach out. He's going to reach out. Like I said, this is an example of the, it's not the exact date, but I'm giving you an example. So the Lord said the 22nd as an example date. But he reached out the 23rd, but just a few minutes after the 22nd. So that kind of gave me the impression that the Lord was like, listen, 
you ain't sleeping until you reach out. Because I told this girl you're reaching out, so you got to reach out. <laughs> so I feel like God must have put some pressure on him to reach out to me because usually I don't think he would have reached out that time. I think that that was something that maybe the Lord had kind of given them a bit of restlessness with. Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe the Lord didn't let my let, let me leave his mind, basically, because the Lord had given me a promise. And so God, God is like, I'm not a liar. So you have to do what I like. He didn't know. Maybe he doesn't know that. But God has told me. And so God has to prove himself to be true. And so when he reached out to me, I was like, oh, my gosh, God, you, you told me he's going to reach out this day. And he did. But I could like it was just a few minutes later. And I was like, OK, Lord, I now know that this is definitely you know, in a way, my, my, I can, I know, I know it's really him now. Because what else evidence did I have if he keeps telling me, like, if he's like, oh, you know, I want us to stop communicating or whatever, then how am I supposed to think it's him? So to me, I was starting to think this is like these fantasy dreams, even though they're not fantasy dreams, they're, they're prophetic dreams. But I felt like they were becoming like, is this a fantasy? You're, you're dreaming about someone, but in reality, it's not match, matching up. So I needed reality to match up with some of these dreams. And if I have some proof, something to something to work with, then I could say, okay, you know, God is moving. And that to me was very big confirmation for me. But there were other confirmations God has given me in different ways. So it could be maybe he messages me on, on, on a specific on a specific day where I'm praying for him at that moment, then you know, he messages me. Something like that. There's just loads of things that happened that made me think, oh, this is definitely the person. I ask God in every way you can possibly think. As in, Lord, if it's my husband, then do this. Lord, if it's my husband, then, you know. I didn't even really need to do that because he was just giving me like five signs, three signs a day. <laughs> I mean, I had so many dreams. I didn't even need any confirmations. But when I started to notice that he didn't really want to com communicate with me, then that's when I started to think, oh, my goodness, this is going south. Now we've blocked each other and all of this, you know. And even I was thinking, yes, let's block each other. Block me. Because I was just thinking, you're not even trying to see if, the, if God is in this. You're not even trying. You're not actually testing the spirit in the sense of not just the prophetic word, but are you trying to see if I am the woman that God has said is for you? Are you doing that? Now, I do believe he's probably prayed and, and sought counsel. Of course, I know all of that. But Obviously, receiving revelation takes time. So he probably needed the time. You know, many of them needed time. Even we needed time. We didn't just get it overnight. It was something that God was doing over time. So that's why they've delayed to reach out. I mean, okay, well, basically, a lot of them have delayed to reach out because some of you... um you know, you just haven't shared what God has done. You have not told anybody anything good that you've done, that the Lord has done in reference to you and your kingdom spouse, in, in reference to you and your kingdom spouse. So basically some of you had some recommunication, but maybe it wasn't what you wanted. Maybe you wanted something bigger. You wanted to have gone on a date by now, but you had some communication. And the Lord wants you to share your communication. Like share it, tell a friend, tell somebody, put it on TikTok, talk about it on on YouTube, you don't have to share all the details, but some of you, especially if you're a prophetic voice, if you have a YouTube channel, some of you have not shared it. You've not shared it as a testimony. The other day, a woman of God is a prophetic voice. She shared her testimony and she said that she's in, in, in re-communication with her kid and spouse. And she said that, you know, they're you know, he's he's come round, they're praying. I think she prayed for him. She was just sharing some of the testimony, the things that God is doing. And she said that she wanted to share it to encourage us. And that's exactly what it did. It encouraged me. It's like, oh, wow, like this is like this is real because I have heard of people talk about it as well, saying that they've received communication. But sometimes it's one of these. Sometimes I hear everyone just say that they're, they're in separation and that's all I ever hear. So I'm like, is this even real? Is, is this anyone end up being with their kid and spouse? Like who has said that they are in separation and then they finally are with them? Who? And so that's why when we hear these testimonies, when you share your testimony, it will encourage others. Some people don't need to necessarily be with their kingdom spouse right now. They just need to know that somebody has had reconnection. So that's why I'm sharing this with you, to encourage you, to let you know that if, if God has said this is the person, trust me, 
you will reconnect to them at some point, even if it's a false start, even if it's just for a month, even if it's for just, a, just for a few weeks or a few days, God will allow you to recommunicate a little bit here and there. And so we, we have had recommunication here and there a few times. Um, it doesn't mean it's all back on in terms of like our friendship. Like, oh, we're, you know, we're following each other again and all that. But at least there's been something positive, you know, that's happened. And I think the most positive time was just around, I think it was around July and we spoke back and forth and it was just like, it wasn't, it wasn't negative. It wasn't like, it was no bad energy. And I think that was, it was for about a month. It was here and there for about a month. And I was just so happy. I, I was, I felt that this was the time where things were going to start happening. I wanted to say to him, has God spoken about me or do you want to meet up? But I didn't want to, I didn't want to push any bound, um, you know, I didn't want to push any boundaries. I wanted it to come from him. If you want to meet up, tell me. If you want to talk about what the Lord is saying, tell me. I didn't want to say, oh, you know, tell me. God. I just wanted to go with the flow. Let's just not even talk about like anything apart from just going with the flow as in talking and, but he didn't go there. Like he didn't, he didn't seem to say anything. So I just, I just left him. And all of a sudden the warfare kicked off again and Satan made sure to, to, you know, to stop the communication again, because he just, I think that maybe he saw something of mine on TikTok about this kingdom marriage thing. And I think it got triggered and I think it annoyed him or maybe somebody said, don't talk to her anymore or whatever. And then he just stopped talking to me. So when I would reach out, he would not reply. And I'm like, what on earth has happened? But I already saw it in my dreams. I saw that he was he would act like this in my dreams. Like he would stop talk, he would stop talking to me. So I already knew that was coming. And I think when you're putting out messages like this, it's very difficult. It can it it can be difficult to try to um to stand for a kingdom spouse when you have to share your business like this. I mean. The thing I'll say to you is don't share their names, don't share their personal details, don't share their profession and things like that. So if you're going to talk about your kid and spouse, talk about him in a very general way where people can't put two and two together. Don't share like personal details and stuff. That's one thing I don't do. And I only share if God gives me that unction or that permission. God wants us to share these things because it's about ministry. He needs us to share it. He doesn't want everything to be a secret because he cannot do anything like that. God loves the glory. He wants the glory. So if it was up to most people that talk about kingdom marriage, they wouldn't even talk about it. They don't want to talk about this because they want to keep everything. But the Lord is the one having them talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> so basically, the Lord will do more for you when you share your testimony. You want God to do more for you and give you your kingdom spouse? You want him to give you these meetups? then tell people what he's done for you so far. You don't have to go and tell the people that don't believe in your promise, that are well, your haters and they're your worst enemies. Don't tell them, but tell those that believe in this promise. Tell your, your audience, you know, like share, hey, you know, I just wanted you to know that I met with my kindred spouse on so-and-so date as a testimony. And then see God do more, watch God do more. And focus on your purpose as well. Be busy working for the Lord. In my dream, I was serving the Lord with diligence and that's how my, I saw my kidney spouse. And in real life, I was serving the Lord. I was busy doing the work at my church and stuff like that. And I know some of us have been pulled out of church or pulled out of certain events and stuff to focus on the work of the Lord, focus on these prayers. Our kingdom spouse has become our assignment. We're now being positioned for marriage. We're no more in the world the way we used to be because God needs us to be positioned for marriage. He needed to put us through a process of pruning, refinement, um, healing, heal our traumas and so on and so forth. But now the time has come that God wants to put you back out there. It's your butterfly season now. It's time to get out there because you finished being in the wilderness, you know, and he's, he's bringing you out of the wilderness. Most of you are out of the wilderness, but it's just that you need to like fly. Now we need to like before he pushes you out <laughs> because you're not moving. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to stay in bondage when you've been, because you're so used to it. It's like the man with the, the man that Jesus said, you know, do you want to get well? And it's like, if you want to get well, what are you doing sitting here like this? Surely by now you could have gone in that water. But some of us become so acquainted with wild the wilderness season that we just don't want to let go of the comfort zone. So, it's time to unblock your kingdom spouse. 
from your Facebook, your Instagram, your WhatsApp, whatever it is, wherever you've blocked him. For some of you, it's time to unblock him. And it's time to be okay with that because you might be tempted to reblock him or he didn't reply or he's not doing this. So I'm going to, but don't do that this time because God is bringing these unions together and you need to build a bridge for your kingdom spouse to come to you. So some of you are posting stuff on social media that's going to scare your kingdom spouse, that makes him think you're angry from his passive aggressive posts. And you need to stop that. You know, I even was doing that a bit. Like I, I was posting these passive aggressive posts and I mean, how is he going to reach out to me like that? You know, and I, I think I did notice his posts were a bit more like kind of calm and encouraging. And then I started to feel like, okay, well, his posts are quite encouraging and calm. So I'm going to stop posting. I don't know. I feel like God used, um, God did a work and that, and, and, you know, some of the dreams I was dreaming as well. I can't always explain some things that God, some things are just really like personal, but there's a way that God will move in our kingdom spouses that will give us the information that we need to know. So God could, you can make them can kind of minister through them in a way where we know it's time to, to now, you know, let down our barriers again and vice versa. So your kingdom spouse is studying you. He's watching you. He's watching you and he's looking at your posts and he's, and he's like, is she angry with me? Should I reach out? Oh, look at her. Too much fire over there. And you know, you're just like, we want them to reach out, but we're fiery. <laughs> so tone down the fire, build a bridge for your kingdom spouse to come to you. And that means you, you need to just, it's like woo him. Like as a, you know, like how puppy is wooed. Like, you know how you, you kind of get a baby to come to you like a child. And you're like, come on, give you a biscuit. Come on, come and cuddle auntie. Come and cuddle, you know, give me a cuddle. Give me a cuddle. Come, come, come. You know, you're all nice to the baby because you know you're going to pick the baby up, give him, give him a cuddle. You're going to give him a biscuit. You're going to play with the baby. You're going to do some coloring together. You're going to do some drawing. You know you have good intentions. And our kindred spouses, they need to know that we're not just trying to woo them in so that we can give them a piece of our mind and, and tell them, oh, so now you want me, I'll let you, you know, like, that's not what, some of you are giving them that impression that you just want to kind of like take revenge in a way, like some kind of silent revenge or something. Like you're going to give them a piece of your mind when they reach out. I told you I was your kingdom spouse. I told you I was the woman of God. You didn't listen to me. Now you want me. No, God doesn't want us to do that. God wants us to be like the, you know, when the baby, when the, when the baby comes, when it, the baby runs to the auntie and it was scared at first, the auntie embraces the baby. You know, I had a dream and the Lord showed me that I was, that basically I was standing at the end of a beach wearing this white dress and my kingdom spouse came out of this boat and it was, you know, it was came out of, came off of the boat and he had been through a lot. He'd been through a lot. It looked like it wasn't really even me at first. He'd been through a lot. Like he had, he had been through some things and he, and he, and I was just at the end of that and he was running towards me and I just, in, and you can tell he was just running. so happy to see me. And I, my face was like so positive. I was, but my arms were wide open and I was like, come, you know, just really just full of love. Just come, you know, that's just, there's no hard feelings. Like I'm just here to receive you a bit like the prodigal's father. And then God showed me a different version, my face going angry and being like, you know, like kind of like showing him that I'm angry and stuff. And then he ran back and went away. And God was showing me that, you know, basically don't do number two, do the first one, you know, embrace him, have your arms wide open. Don't do the other one where your face is all angry, all moody and everything. And then he runs away back to the same old place. So I want to encourage you to, um, to embrace your kingdom spouse with love and affection. If God wants you to reach out, reach out. If they don't reply, let the Lord show you what's going on in the spirit instead. Because sometimes they can't reply because they're not fully there yet, but just, they may reply in a different way, 
at some point. So just, they also want to test you. They want to know, mm, does she really mean this? She's telling me she loves me. She's telling me she misses me. Does she really mean it? Or is she just angry with me and pretending? So they also want to test you as well. So that's why I was saying build a bridge, you know, do post the kind of things that will make your kindred spouse want to reach out to you. You know, warm messages, encouragement, you know, things like that. So this is how you're, so basically the Lord showed me that. Yeah, the, so, so basically your kingdom spouse is inconsolable at this point. For some of you, no one can console him but you or I, depending on, you know, some of us, our kindred spouses are inconsolable. I have had that word come up twice over the weekend. You may look at them and think, oh, they're doing so well. They're so yes, they're doing so well on the outside, but internally they are, they've gone through so much and they just need you. They need I, they need us. They need to just be in our arms of love. They need encouragement. They don't need us to beat them down and tell them that they were wrong. We, I told you so. We, they don't need all that. And we just need to console them and, um, and be patient, be patient, because they may not say everything overnight. Oh, yes, I do love you, blah, blah, blah. They may not do that. They may. There's so many messages I've received from my kindred spouse in my dreams, but I haven't heard them in real life. I just have to trust. And I do believe he does give me messages of love, but it's not in the straightforward way that I would want, but I still receive the message. If you're studying your kingdom spouse, you should know. You will know. You'll be able to see that he is doing things towards you that others may not know that will give you confirmation. God will reveal it to you. You will speak the same language. Maybe he maybe he will, um, it will be little thoughtful things, basically. I'm not gonna share any examples. Let's just pretend you both play the drums, right? You both play the drums. You might see your kingdom spouse. He might play the drum, but he may play it in a way that, you, the way you play it. There's a certain way that you play the drum the drums and you will know that oh that only he knows that like maybe there's a there's a certain thing he'll do with the with the drum what's the drum what's it called the drum beat or the beater <laughs> i don't even know what it's called he may do some move with the beater something that only you do where he's like teasing you a little bit and you will know that that's him showing his love to you you know or maybe he but you've you know maybe you maybe you your kingdom spouse he visits you at work and basically he doesn't tell you he loves you, he doesn't tell you he misses you, he doesn't tell you anything like that, but he drops a key ring for you and says, oh, I bought you this key ring, you know how much you love key rings. And that could be the sign, you know? I mean, I don't want to give any obvious examples, but there's a way that God will allow you to communicate with your kindred spouse. It could be through dreams and it's, it's going to be through dreams for the most part. But there'll be other ways as well. So patience is key. Yay! Communication is coming swiftly between you and your kingdom spouse. Just get excited and get ready. This could be through Instagram. It could be through Facebook. It could be through email. It could be through post. It could be all of them. But all of them. It could be through TikTok. I mean, the Lord is doing it. Your kingdom spouse is... Um, the Lord wants you to forgive your kingdom spouse wholeheartedly, let go of grudges. There's a dream I had about six cats. I had a dream about six cats and each cat represented a different, it was all in my room. And I was like, oh my God, what's all this? Each cat represented things that God wanted me to get out of my life or my room. Like as in like, for example, if you have any, if there's any, if you have any bitterness, get rid of it. I knew I needed to get rid of those cats. One of them was even a slumber cat. It was like a slumber cat. And the Lord was telling me that basically we need to be aware of the spirit of slumber and staying in, the, this is back to what I was saying before, staying in the wilderness too long, tarrying to do what God is telling you to do. The Lord wants some of you to get therapy for like six months. Some of you will really need to heal and, and 
um, to prevent not limping in life. Deliverance is not always enough. This is another thing that I want to talk about, but I'll probably talk about this in another video. But yeah, the Lord wants some of you to get therapy. Like sometimes you think, oh yeah, I'm just praying, I'm fasting and, you know, deliverance, but I'm sorry, but that does not, that doesn't do everything. The Lord has allowed there to be resources for a reason. Healing is part of it. Emotional healing, mental health is important. Your outbursts of rage, your, or whether it's your, you know, your mood swings or whatever it is you're going through. The attacks that you've been, the, the trauma that you have not dealt with. Some of you have dealt with it, but some of you just need to continue to deal with it. So that by in six months from now, I had a dream about this. I'll talk about this another time, but the Lord wants some of you to get therapy for like six months. Deep therapy. Get, like as in stay long enough to see change, you know? Um, so praying against the spirit of slumber. So basically the six cats represented different things that we need to cast out, remove. So if you have procrastination, cast it out. If you have the spirit of slumber, cast it out. If you have resentment, get rid of it. If you have bitterness, get rid of it. If you're basically um, annoyed that you're not married yet, let it go so that you can receive a promise. The Lord wants us to forgive our kin and spouses wholeheartedly, let go of grudges. The Bible says this, freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10 verse 8, the New Living Translation. The songs that are coming up, um, especially around that time, but there is um, there are some songs that have come up. But these are the main ones that I was wanting to share with you back then. Without you, Mariah Carey. I can live is li if li I, oh my goodness, it's, I'm mumbling. I can live if living is without you. I can give, I can't give anymore. I can live <laughs> if living is without you. Okay, you know how it goes. I can't live, I can't live anymore. <laughs> Love that loud. Okay, so yeah, this was one of the songs that came up and I just really felt like, oh my goodness. You know, I, I just, there was a day where I really felt like my kingdom spouse really needs me. And this was the song that came up. And then If I Don't Have You, Whitney Houston is another song that came up. Is it the one that goes, I have nothing, 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 if I don't have you. Sorry, guys, I'm not singing this properly. But, and you know, obviously I'll sing it differently if this was a karaoke night, you know, but it's not karaoke. Or if it's on stage, I might put a little bit more of a, you know. But yeah. <laughs> um, and then going back to that song, um, the Lord gave me, the Lord told me that this is also a um, breakout year 2.0. And I'll talk about that another time. But this is also a 2.0 breakout year in the sense that the Lord also wants us to continue to break out. And this kind of connects to what I was talking about with therapy. This, you know, read the books, work on your self-love, self-care, keep working on these things because it's going to help. And then there's a song. So basically check out the song Breakout by Swing Up Sister. You've got to find a way, say what you want to say, break out. That's how it goes don't stop to us i know you find a way to... yeah you know just check it out check out all these songs and then we can work it out tevin campbell that's another song to listen to i'm going to listen to all these songs today <laughs> again but the lord is just like ministering to you that these are the this is what's going on your with your kingdom spouse right now they have become inconsolable nobody can console them but you and that's why they're going to come because they're going to realize there's nothing out here that matches it's not a match it's there's no comparison i need her i need him it depends on whether you're if you're a man of god waiting if you're a woman of god so the communication is coming swiftly hallelujah okay so listen to your kin and spouse do not take over the conversation when they do reach out don't expect so much straight away and um, plan in advance what you're going to say to your kingdom spouse like know the certain points you want to make ask the lord to tell you what to say or what to ask but don't put pressure on him on her. Don't try to bombard them with too many questions um, in the beginning, okay? Just let it happen, let it flow because you're gonna be meeting up with your kingdom spouse, some of you going on dates and things like that. It's about to happen fully for some of you, okay? Avoid stubbornness and hardness of heart. Be compassionate and be gracious, yet honest. You need to be honest as well. But just find a way to do it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up. Thanks for watching. I love you all. Please let me know if you have any questions or thoughts in the comment section. And please stay prayed up, guys. I know the warfare has been crazy lately. 
It's because your promise is at hand and Satan is angry. So stay blessed. I love you. Bye.